Hello and welcome to 7 Days of Science. Coming up this week, I show Ben my plan for the future of the channel. As you can probably tell, this is all really weird and complicated. Ben describes what Ollie's doing in the garden. Digging for food, water or minerals, similar to what African elephants do. And I don't... <laughs> Starting off the news this week, the first of two stories involving the Large Hadron Collider, or LHC. Using data from both the LHC and Tevatron particle accelerators, scientists have for the first time confirmed the existence of Odoron, a state consisting of an odd number of gluons that was predicted all the way back in 1973 with the rise of quantum chromodynamics. Quantum chromodynamics is a theory describing the strong force which is what binds quarks together to form slightly larger subatomic particles like protons and neutrons, and other things. The messenger particles of the strong force are these gluons, in the same way that messenger particles of electromagnetic force are photons. Odoron, in line with quantum chromodynamics, is colourless, although not the colour that you think, as it contains an odd number of gluons, meaning that, unlike gluons on their own, Odoron cannot itself interact with the strong force. As you can probably tell, this is all really weird and complicated, but I'll link some further reading below if you want to understand some of these concepts a little better. It is really interesting and I highly recommend it. In other news, we have more from the LHC that potentially challenges the standard model, which is the current widely accepted theory that describes how the very smallest building blocks of the universe behave and interact. It's worth noting though that it is well known that the standard model isn't a complete blueprint for everything that happens in the universe. There's a few things it doesn't cover, like dark matter for example. This particular measurement compares two types of decay of beauty quarks, one involving an electron and another involving a muon. According to the standard model, these decays involving two flavours of leptons, the electron and the muon, should happen at the same probability, or very very close. The results that the researchers have found here, however, do not adhere to this, and the probability that they are compatible with the standard model is 0.1%. Again, this is all very complicated, so I'll link some further reading below. I recommend you read through the Sign News article which explains this in more detail. Naturally, this discovery is huge, and the team behind these results are looking to further verify their results with some more scrutinisation. And finally from me this week, NASA has said that it plans to fly the Ingenuity craft on Mars in early April. Ingenuity is the tiny helicopter that has been put onto the Perseverance rover, and its flight on the Red Planet will mark the first ever powered flight on another planet. Mars has a very thin atmosphere, and so Ingenuity has naturally been built to be extremely light. I for one am very much looking forward to this feat, and indeed the video of it, which will hopefully be recorded by Perseverance and sent back to Earth for all of us to see. Now over to Ben, who will hopefully be less confusing. Thanks, Doug. Well, as I'm sure many of you have already seen by now, there's been a pretty incredible shark discovery this week, with the naming and description of Aquilolamna milarque. Aquilolamna is a late Cretaceous aged shark discovered in Mexico that had an incredible body plan previously unknown for these animals, with extremely elongated, slender, wing like pectoral fins and a mouth that seems to suggest it was a filter feeder. Aquilolamna has been tentatively placed as a lamniform, the mackerel sharks, in its own new family, Aquilolamnidae. This is a truly remarkable discovery, showing that in the elasmobranchs, the grouping that includes sharks and their relatives, planktivorous soaring body plans evolved in an unrelated group over 30 million years before the manta and devil rays first appeared, an amazing case of convergent evolution. It also shows that sharks had apparently experimented with some quite unexpected morphologies in the past, making it an exciting prospect to think about what other previously unrecognised bizarre extinct shark species might still be out there to discover. And finally is a paper that describes an articulated body skeleton of an unnamed ankylosaurid from Upper Cretaceous rocks in the southern Gobi Desert. This skeleton, comprising vertebrae, ribs, pelvic and pectoral girdles, limbs and osteoderms, actually indicates that at least two types of flank armour were present in ankylosaurs, one which had spine-like osteoderms and one which had keeled rhomboidal ones. But not only this, the study also finds that anatomical features related to digging are actually present throughout the ankylosaur group. This is something that's been hypothesised before, but this paper finds some good evidence for the possibility that ankylosaurs were capable diggers suggesting they could probably have dug into substrate, creating shallow pits that they could then crouch down into, protecting their vulnerable limbs and exposing only their armoured backs. 
Additionally, they could have been digging for food, water or minerals, similar to what African elephants do. So a pretty remarkable paper that suggests some fascinating potential prehistoric behaviours. Back to Doug in the studio. Thank you, Ben. That's it for this week's 7 Days of Science. I do hope you enjoyed it and as always, we'll see you on Sunday.